Uh, it's to do with, with the millennium coming forward. Uh, it's future thinking. I mean, it's outside of love and instinct. Most things are explainable. Logic can, can be applied to, 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 to many things. And um, I liked it. I like that sort of breakdown of it, like the specific science and then the, the general things. And uh, it's just about how things work or sometimes don't work. You know, I'd much rather have someone really hate me than really think that I was, well, all right, you know, it wouldn't have any effect. And I think we've, we've uh, a lot of people really like us, and, and there's probably a lot of people that don't like us, but I, w I wouldn't want to occupy that middle ground. I think that's a really dilute place to be. So we just continued on doing what we're doing and try to change within, within our own potential. Uh, I think we're, we're getting there, you know, and this record is probably just further along the road for us. You know, music is just still crazy to me, it drives me crazy, you know, I don't know enough of it and I don't know enough things and writing songs is just a way for me to, I never, you know, I never had a guitar lessons or anything. And so I just, it's like a voyage and it just frustrates me. I mean, I want to do more than 12 songs every year and a half. It just sifts me off. I want to, you know, I love so many different styles of music. Um, from, you know, reggae through to, through to hardcore, you know, through every skin color, skin tone. I, I, I like the idea of music being separate from, 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 from color and from background and should be future thinking. And the only thing that pisses me off is that, you, you, you know, just the nature of it, that you can't bring out more records, you know. Two records a year would suit me fine. For me personally, a couple of videos were a little overblown, and I didn't think they were the smart, smartest things to do, to go and, uh, but then you meet people and they say, oh wow, we saw this video, that video, it was really cool. And I'm thinking, wow. Oh, so bloated, you know. So some of the, the, the not so smart moves have just been uh, making some um, maybe slightly over expensive videos, but we haven't really done many of those. I think we're a powerful band, you know, you can be any number of powerful in any number of ways. You know, from intimate can be really powerful to, to louder guitars. I don't see us in the new heavy metal kind of wave of things going on. I think they're still song oriented, but I like that power, whether it's quiet power or loud power, as long as it has emotional resonance, there's nothing worse than if it just kind of goes by and everyone's like, well, yeah. Well, it was delayed for a number of reasons. It was delayed because we wanted to spend time and get it right. Um, it was also delayed because we had issues with our record label. So we decided to um, make that, we didn't get a full, we didn't have enough time before Razor Blade Suitcase was released to address this particular issue, which is essentially when you first sign a record deal, it's pretty much stacked in a record company's favour. That's just the way it is. Unless you're in a bidding war and there's 15 major record labels, and then they'll give. But when when you're in a situation like we were, where we just signed to an independent label in America, we got pretty stitched, you know, as everybody does. And then when you sell a few records and the record label makes some money, you then go in and say, look, we know we got stitched, but we don't want to get stitched anymore. And most record labels turn around and go, yeah, okay, you know, let's make it fair. And our record label went, well, that's it, that's what you get. And we said, okay, we'll go and make a record then, and we'll pay for it ourselves. And, you know, we won't pick up our option, and you can sit there and sweat, and you can carry on, and that's what happened. And then when we made a really good record, because we didn't know we were going to make a good record, we then went back and said, you can hear this, but you don't own it yet, do you? You know? And they said, yeah, OK, and then they heard it, and then they said, uh, what do you want? And we said, well, here it is, it's written down. You know, we could have done this a year ago if you'd have decided to do it, but you decided to sit around thinking you could sign loads of new bands and have loads of success, and nothing's happened since we were away, has it? All we ever did was get ish from everybody, and everyone was just going, yeah, 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 they're a one-album band. And then it was like... Yeah, yeah, they have two album band, you know, it'd be the third one there. And it's like, well, guess what, we're back again and we've got an so what are you going to say? So, oh, yeah, yeah, but on the fourth record, they're really going to have problems. It's like, 
you know, get over it. You know, all the bands that they were putting us up against and saying, you know, have all gone. Or well, 90% of them have gone, you know, and we're still here. And if we sell a few million records, then people have pretty much got to accept that we're, yeah. we're here. Yeah, I was doing some remixing and, you know, I made some music, some dance music of my own, which I still can't bring myself to listen to, <laughs> yeah. Uh, smartest move we've made, just touring, definitely. It's the, it seems to be, you know, I mean, it's such an old cliche, but it's so true. It's like the, it is the sort of, it's the flesh on the bones of a career if you don't do, or in fact, it's the bones of a career. If, there's a lot of people go out there with a whole load of flesh and no bones and end up sort of turning into a jellyfish halfway around and their career is all over the place. Change. I don't think any of us have changed particularly. I mean, Gab's lifestyle's changed the most because he happens to be dating and lead singer of another band. So, I mean, he has the total rock star life, you know, jet setting from London to LA to, you know, like, you know, it's like Air Milesville. He could probably fly around the world about 15 times with his Air Miles. So, from that point of perspective, he's probably had the most sort of, all, you know, alterations. You know, the rest of us are just living in London or wherever and pretty much when we're at home, we're at home, you know. Um, and personalities wise, I suppose we've just got cockier, really, you know. Sold more records, you get more and more confident, don't you? You know, you don't, you don't worry about what other people say quite as much. I mean, it hurts, but you don't, you just sort of, you just look at a journalist and think, well, you're on 30 grand a year and, you know, I'm on 30 grand a show, so <laughs> who wins? I don't, you know, if, that, if money's your thing, you know, whatever. Um, when we recorded this one, we wanted to um, just incorporate something of what was going on, you know, i.e. the sort of electronica and the, the more modern things that were happening at the moment that were just, were, were less rock. But, um, and then the cons consequently the trouble with that is just trying to know how you link the two without sounding like some dilettantes who are just trying to cop the latest fashion to, to do. So that was sort of the challenge, was trying to marry the two together without sounding stupid. I remember um, years ago, my sister shared a house with a famous critic called Nick Kent, who used to write for The Enemy. And when he left, his floor was two inches thick in unopened records. And some, like, really good records. Two inches of records covered this whole room in his apartment. And we, it was great, because I got given all these records. It was at 13, it was like, wow. So that sort of told me something about <laughs> that world somehow. So I don't, you know, obviously you care when, when, when people write things about you that are negative or good. But really, um, it would be terrible if you based your career on what, what people said about you. I did a solo album. Started, I started doing like an EP and then it became an album, and then, um, which is just coming out in a couple of weeks on the internet only. It's like an internet only album on collectingdust.com. And so I did that basically for um, about three months, three, four months, just sort of got a lot of stuff out of my system. Um, tried to sing various things, which is cool. Did a few other. I did a few other things. I played with John Cale at Carnegie Hall, and um, did some stuff for a Mingus tribute album that never happened. And so, I had a lot of fun. We've done a lot of dumb things. I think. I think we just shut um, shut our mouths off a bit in the press. Maybe as a you know, it's like I'm just saying silly things about people. We, we just, See, ultimately, you know, like, just silly, drunken, sort of childish things that you say and sort of getting a bit overexcited, showing off, you know, things like the kids do. I think it's, I mean, I think we're all fairly similar to the way we used to be. Um, we've got a bit more money, though, and everyone has a little tendency to be a little bit flash occasionally, like, you know, the nice bottle of wine occasionally, or, t you know, or more, more than occasionally, but, um, Hasn't I don't think I think we you know with, with each other all the same, we we treat each other exactly the same way we did before. I think after making the second album, and we made it really quickly, you know, sort of right after to Wisdom Studio, I made it really quickly, sort of finished it and worked with Steve Albini and the, and the nature of working with Steve Albini is you do do a record quickly. I think this time we thought we'd try different, try this in a bit different, try maybe spend a little longer doing it, and you know take our time a little bit. And uh, make it maybe a bit more, a bit more textured, a bit lusher in some places. 
I think you can't listen to critics too much. I think you, you're, um, you know, it, it just messes you up completely. If you if you thought you had to, oh no, we can't write a song like that because the critics are going to say, you know, you can't you can't let that affect you. I think the main thing to do is I think that the people that buy records are the biggest critics and the best critics. So we you know we rely on them. I think. I went to I moved, I moved to Paris a few months actually, and. Um, I sort of I, I got myself some sort of studio equipment. I worked my brother makes sort of TV commercials and short films and stuff. And I did some sort of music and stuff with him, so that was nice. It was kind of quite you know quite refreshing. I think the touring part is important. I think especially in America, um, I think that really helps. It helps anyone's career. I think if someone can come go and see you play live and you, you play well and you do a good show for them, then they're probably going to come back and they're probably going to go buy your records more so than, than just seeing your video on MTV or, or hearing you on a radio. You can't do the same thing every single time, otherwise your, your sound will become, you know, sort of, not become stale, but you want to keep things fresh and, and new and, and different approaches. And, you know, I guess our next album, maybe we'll do something you know, different again.